I live in Wales. You may or may not have heard of it. One of the world's best rugby teams and the home of the guy who wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory are the best things going for us. It's next to England, in case you don't know. Anyway, about eight years ago, my mom was introduced to the idea of camping in the mountains of Wales. Most of the mountainous areas are also near beaches. So pretty landscapes were promised whenever you went camping on the rare occasion that it was sunny. We found a small beach town and just up the road from it were tens of different caravan parks, all situated on the sloping hill. The caravan park we chose, which I can't remember the name of and wouldn't disclose any way, was quite big to be fair. You enter on a rocky path big black burn to the right and once driving past the burn the path opens up into a larger area still quite rocky with some caravans along the sides in this rocky area is the house of the owner who was quite nice and wouldn't have been great company if it wasn't for the fact that i was terrified by the fact he only had half a tongue I think it was due to cancer from smoking, but as a kid I couldn't sympathize. It just scared me. Past his house, the rocky path again opened up into a large field that made its way down the hill. There was enough room for at least 120 caravans here. There never were that many though. Obviously the place was very attractive and that's what sold it for my mom. But when the idea of buying a caravan to be placed there was introduced to the owner, he quickly mentioned another option, a static caravan. He seemed quite desperate, but we thought it was nice enough and paid the money and rented it for a week, maybe. It was overall a good experience. The caravan was quite old inside. The furniture and decor reminded me of an old women's house. One thing, however, ruined the whole experience for me. The caravan was placed against a wall and a line of trees, which at night made strange noises. I think it was just the trees groaning in the wind, a common form of weather there, but it sounded so lifelike. I can remember almost falling asleep to the sound and in my head imagining a farmer with a rake in his hand humming or singing while walking. The more I thought about it, though the more it scared me. By the end of the week I was up all night imagining this farmer walking back and forth past the caravan humming while looking through the windows at us. However, we went home with mostly happy memories of our holiday. And that would have been that if it wasn't for the fact that we had stayed there the year after for a week and the year after that and the year after that. Surprisingly, I never heard the groaning on any of the nights I slept in that caravan after the first year. This would have been a good thing if it wasn't for the fact that something ten times worse happened maybe three years into this little annual holiday. I will set the scene. I was lying in my bed. It was earlier than when I would usually go to sleep. But it must have been a long day and I wanted to rest my eyes for a bit. The rest of the family, my mom, sister and my mom's boyfriend were in the living room. The bedroom I was in was quite small my bed being against the wall on the right next to the window. Then a small gap was between mine and my sister's bed off to the left side. I must have been deep in thought and was lying with my eyes half closed, looking forward to the end of the room in which the door was located. I can remember my heart rate rising and out of nowhere this thing came from around the corner in the corridor outside. I remember it being about five foot, maybe a little more tall. It looked almost like a fuzzy cylinder shape, except the top of it wasn't flat, it was a half sphere. Looking back, I think it might have been a clogged person. 
anyway it stopped by the bedroom and turned i could tell it was turning from the shadow it projected into the room it then slowly drifted toward me no noise no nothing i was frozen in place it moved at quite a pace as well and when i finally had a gasp of the situation i shot under the covers like a little kid after a minute or two i looked up saw nothing and went crying to my mom as you do that was the last scary thing that happened in the caravan but it wouldn't be the last time that i saw this black thing i don't know what i saw that night i don't know what was there but it definitely scared me after doing some reading i think that what i saw was a shadow person or something similar it makes me wonder if i really did imagine that farmer or if maybe somehow i just had knowledge of the fact that there was one in any case i don't know what's going on there but i don't think i want to find out i wish that was the last time anything paranormal happened to me but it wasn't another memorable childhood experience i had was one morning when in my old bedroom in my old house i awoke again eyes half open to see that in the corner of my room was another shadow man type person sitting down on this old wood wicker armchair type thing that i had i immediately closed my eyes and then reopened them seconds later to find that no one was there even though i had only seen it for a second or two i remember every detail i even remember describing it to my friends in primary school this one had details like actual features unlike the shadowy blob that the other one was i remember seeing hard leather boots or those black boots that had iron inside at the tips the ones workers use i think there was a trench coat i'm not sure i cannot remember that very clearly but one thing that i do remember is that he was wearing quite a posh looking hat similar to a bowler except the top was flatter he was either staring at me the floor or reading book that memory is also quite fuzzy see that's one always stuck with me just because of how scared i was after it happened and again there was no noise i wasn't petrified the minute i saw him it was all after it happened i saw the same thing another two times after that and even weirder one of those times was after the chair was moved to my mom's room and i was sleeping in her bed one night i was like 9 years old at the time he was there except for some reason i remember him being sort of a baby blue color at the time not black one thing is for certain all this started after that first event in the caravan i never remember anything ever happening before that weirdly the guy who owned it tried to actually sell it to us the last time we visited that place maybe he was losing money from it or he didn't like the feel of it either you can't help but wonder so this one again has stayed with me all my life and it actually only happened about 3 or 4 years ago maybe so basically at the time we had this thing called a dehumidifier outside of my room a little plug in machine thing that would do stuff with the air i don't know i never understood it it made quite a loud but coming noise when we turned it on sort of like a powerful air conditioner i loved that noise and it always helped me sleep so my mom's boyfriend at the time a different one to the last boyfriend had a pretty bad snoring problem for some reason any little habit or problem he had including snoring really pissed me off or annoyed me so obviously every night was filled with me terribly angry I actually had a ADHD breakout level hitting myself crying and other things just because I was so angry that he was snoring a lot of the time I had go and wake him up and that had be at peace for the rest of the night 
But after we got the dehumidifier, I didn't have to worry about that. I could just turn it on when I was going to bed and it would be a win-win. One night though, when getting up and turning it on, the second I did so, behind me near my bathroom door, I heard a middle-aged man shout, Hey! It scared the crap out of me. I quickly nope it back to my room. I don't have anything else on that. It may or may not be linked to the other stuff. All I know is that, that caravan seemed to have set off a chain of paranormal events in my life and I don't very much appreciate it. When I was a teenager, my parents built a custom home. It was one of the first houses to be built within a new housing development. It was our dream home until it wasn't and little did we know that by building this house we would be unleashing a nightmare. When the land across the street was being prepared for more homes, the local news station came out because it had been discovered that this area had once been an ancient Indian burial ground. Meanwhile, the activity at our house had begun to peak. It began with our first Thanksgiving there. Our entire family had seen a man in the middle of the empty field across the street from an upstairs window. He had a little dog and was crouched down in the middle of the field for a good five minutes. When suddenly he disappeared, then my friend and I would hear our first and middle names being called out. And she or I would often think it was the other one calling. But when we exchanged stories, it turned out that nobody else had been calling our names. So the voice had come from nowhere. In the age before teenagers had cell phones, I had my own house phone number that was separate from my parents' number. Our numbers were very similar to each other. And one Saturday morning, my phone rang. I looked at the called ID and I saw my parents' number calling me from downstairs. I answered the phone on instinct and said, Hi mom, I want to go to McDonald's. It was morning and my cousin had spent the night. We had seen her calling and thought we would shoot our shot. It came to our surprise then that what greeted us was an eerie low tone man's voice asking for me and my cousin by our nicknames. When I start questioning what was going on, the man replied, I am in a house and I hung up. Then we had to try to search for some kind of weapons. Being 16, we grabbed some uh, curling irons and headed downstairs. The layout of the house is that there was a double staircase and an area under the stairs which was my niece's play closet. Realizing that my parents were not home my cousin and I ran down on one side of the staircase and out of the house. After a while, we got the courage to go back inside and the door to the closet under the stairs was wide open. But other than that, nobody was there. When we looked back on the house phone, the number that had called us was not my mom and dad's phone number, but my own phone number. Because the two lines had similar numbers and are under the same name, I think my mind just thought it was my mom calling. This was so weird, but unfortunately, it was only the beginning. A time later, I was on the house phone again late at night, talking to a boy. When the phone began to die, the base to the phone was in the office, and I walked downstairs in the dark, not wanting to wake my parents up because I was breaking the phone curfew. Instead of walking into the office, I walked straight to the bathroom. I even said aloud, what am I doing here? And thought I must be tired. And I proceeded into the office. 
staring straight at me with her hand directly over the base of the phone was a woman who had on a floor length all white victorian style dress with a high neckline and long sleeves she was staring straight at me with her hand over the base of the phone i didn't turn my back on her but i began to back away slowly she wasn't disappearing and once i got to the point where i could run i did my brother for some reason left his long time girlfriend and their young daughter for some random girl and my mom let the new couple stay in the house this woman was weird and left everyone with a bad feeling the energy of the house was very heavy and everybody seemed to be at odds fighting more often than not we were not the happy family that we once were the girl told me that she does black magic and i told her that we weren't into that kind of thing by the time i was 18 i told my mom that if she didn't get this girl out of the house i was leaving i knew i had to get out of there and i ended up moving 45 minutes away after i had already moved out i could come back to visit my mom finally did kick the girl out and came to her sense one day she called me to come over because of something disturbing that she had found when i got there she discovered a dark blue picnic basket that was filled with this strangely formed fabric dolls or bunny looking things that had pins stuck in them and more random items wrapped in dark colored fabrics my mom had a sewing room and this was all of her stuff but she had no idea how this basket had formed inside of the basket were personal items from every member of our family except for my brother the basket had my baby teeth my mom and dad's wedding tape and the personal items from my 2 year old niece the paranormal activity was at an all time high in the house the stories only covered the surface of what happened and they are only coming from my perspective my mom and dad have their own horror stories and my brother was killed 6 years ago meanwhile at the time when i was 18 i got into a horrible car accident which caused me to have to quit working and move back into that house with my parents this is where i noticed the paranormal activity was also occurring outside of the home my friend and i were sitting outside of the house in a car listening to music when we both saw something i perceived it to be a 4 foot tall blacker than black shadow figure of a person walking or bouncing across the grass and as she saw the same figure although she perceived it as a white figure moving across the grass my parents would tell me crazy stories of people following them and being weird outside of the home too my mom said that there was an increasing number of license plates that she noticed that had a dark theme such as into scene 666 and they would have a lot of weird incidents outside and around the house honestly i didn't believe them i thought they were just being paranoid shortly after i moved back i went to go see my friend one night and at a stop light there was a white man and a white woman in a pickup truck they both looked so creepy they had their windows down both staring at me with their full bodies and heads turned in my direction and this lifeless look in their eyes they were so pale It was almost as if two zombies were just gazing at me during the duration of the red light. I was trying not to look but I couldn't help it and I could feel their attention on me. They both hadn't moved. They had light colored eyes and were staring creepily. Granted, it could have just been two addicts or something. But these people held identical body language and were so strange. There was only one person who had ever looked like this and it happened when my mom and I were at the grocery store there's this man that we refer to to this day as white eyes he was a tall middle-aged white male with piercing bluish white eyes who was following us around in a grocery store pushing an empty basket 
just lifelessly staring at my mom and I with that blank look. And his head turned towards us, not breaking gaze every single aisle we went to. He was there. We left the store. We tried to bless the house, my mom and I, but it would only be a quick fix. And eventually that house mysteriously burned down. I have no idea what was going on there. I'm just glad I'm not there anymore.